Hi guys, what's going on? This is me again. It's 1.54 p.m. Central Standard Time, September the 14th, 2016. And I've got another comment. For those of you that have just stumbled into this video, my name is Rusty. My channel is Rusty78609. I full-time RV. I've done it for 23 years. This is an RV. I'm at my home base in Central Texas, USA. I also go camping in a car, a Toyota Prius, and I've done that for about three and a half years. And I've got some playlists on my homepage if you're interested in learning more about RVing or camping in a car, a Prius primarily. Uh, just go to my homepage and click on the playlist and pick the one you want. That'll be something you can find out there. I, I spend a lot of time on them. Okay, here we are. And this thing here, this it, this is it. This is TC, Trenton Clump, and he is the only presence in this RV other than me. I tried a pet and it didn't work. Too old, I'm 71. Anyway, this comment I've got here, I'm going to call on the subscribers and viewers to, like we did for the lady from New York, you know, people kind of added their input because the lady in New York was going to get an RV and live in it, etc., etc., and didn't have much money, and a lot of people gave some feedback. Well, this is one here. Uh, this is from a lady, a female type, <clears throat> because I had posted a uh, video about camping in a Prius, and uh, she says, uh, I've got to be locked in when I close my eyes, too, because I said the reason, one of the things I enjoyed about camping in the Prius was, uh, you know, all four doors, you can lock them, and, you know, you got the windows rolled up, you know, maybe that far down or whatever, and you feel pretty safe, much safer than, than you'd feel in a tent. And uh, so anyway, <clears throat> uh, she apparently saw that video, and uh, she says, uh, you know, she says, I've got to be locked in when I close my eyes. Two, Rusty, can you please talk about solo female travelers? You mean to go ACDC here, huh? Anyway, no, no I, I can give you a little, give you some tips, and then these guys, believe me, the subscribers and viewers on this channel are not shy. They are not shy. They will give you comments, and uh, they, and most of them, in fact, nearly all of them are very helpful. So here's here's where she needs her help. It says, Rusty, can you please talk about solo female travelers? It says, I'm the one who asked about finding someone to convert a transit, a Ford Transit, to a camper. And sorry if I misled you. That's all right. Help. That's the way it is on YouTube, okay? To survive, you got to mislead people. Uh, I don't yet have the van. It's a plan, but she's working on it. I'm northeast and want to see the entire country. I want to visit each state. I also want to go around the world. National and world travel both are on my bucket list. Thank you for everything. Well, let me get, I'm going to hit this one backwards first. Uh, for, your, for your worldwide travels, let me tell you a channel you need to hook up with that will give you some real information, okay? Straightforward. And I've traveled a little bit myself, and I've been in Europe, and I've been in Asia, and I've been in Russia. <clears throat> And I've, and I've stayed at hostels and different things like that. I'm not sure what you're going to do. And, uh, but anyway, the name, the website you need to go to on YouTube, or the channel, or the channel on YouTube is Hobo Traveler. This guy's been traveling around the world for like 18 years on a budget of $1,000 or less. Okay? So he can give you some hell of a tips. He's got a website you can go to for just tons of info on your worldwide travel. Now back to the USA and traveling in a van as a solo female traveler. Well, uh, I'll give you tips that would apply to males or females, okay? Because uh, safety is your primary issue, okay? Now as far as, you know, going to the restroom and all that stuff, no problem, okay? Uh, safety is number one when you are traveling alone. If you're in a group, rarely are you going to have any issues, rarely. But when you're alone, like me, I'm an old man, I'm 71, and you're a female, you're going to have some, okay? You're going to have some issues sooner or later. Is there a way to avoid them? There are some ways to try to avoid them. Number one, 
And these are in no order. These are just going to come out of my head as TC hits them in there, okay? Anyway, number one, when you're traveling and you got to go to a grocery store or go, you're going to go into a restaurant to eat or you're going to go in to get anything, okay? Or you're going to go to a store. Park as close to the entrance as you possibly can. Why? Because if you park way out there in the boonies, like I normally do to keep people from ding in my car, you're going to meet every panhandler in the parking lot. Because they don't wait. Normally they're not waiting by the door because the manager will run them off. If you, if you exit your car headed towards the door of a business and you see some bums sitting around there or sleeping around there, don't go in there. Hell with it. You know, you don't, they're not paying you to go in that store. You know, and, and for a woman, you know, it, they, they're going to get the easy target. They're looking for old people, me, and they're looking for females, okay? I promise you, because they know they can physically control those. So, that's number one. Number two, whenever you get in your car, immediately lock the door. Make that just a habit total habit. It saved my jock or my ass in Lubbock, Texas uh, here just a few weeks ago. I was coming back from a camping trip and had spent the night at a Motel 6 in Lubbock, Texas. And uh, while I was there, I went to a restaurant to get me some, I ordered some food to go and I parked fairly close to the front. I was like one row off and went in, got the stuff that I'd ordered, came out, got in the car, and of course I immediately locked the door, and damn lucky I was, because on the passenger side was this black guy, and he was banging on the window, okay, with his fist like this, and he, he was already pulling on the door handle, okay? Well, fortunately, I have what's called a mind changer laying in the front seat, which happens to be a 38 Smith & Wesson Police Special. Anyway, I just picked it up and pointed at him. He immediately changed his mind and ran off into the wilderness or wherever the hell he went. But, you know, it, it was just some old scraggly bum, you know, looking for an easy target. Not much telling where he was, but he saw an old man. Said, hell, I can take him. And he could have, no doubt. So anyway, those are the situations you run into. And grants, uh, and it doesn't matter if it's a big city, small town, doesn't matter. Don't, don't think because you're in a small town that it's safer. It ain't. People are people, okay? And bums and cons are cons, okay? But in Grants, New Mexico, uh, again, I parked away from the entrance because I knew I had to put ice in my ice chest and I needed to drain the water out and such. I didn't want to be right in front of the store. And it was early in the morning. It was like 9 o'clock in the morning. There were about 10 or 12 cars in the parking lot. Didn't think I'd have any issues at that time of the day. So anyway, I go in and get stuff, come back, push some cart. Here he comes. Mr. Panhandler, you know, hey man, do you know how to get to blah, blah, blah? I said, no, man, I sure don't. He'd already seen the Texas plates on my car, so he knew I was from out of state traveling, and, and he'd already made up his plan, okay? All he wanted was some money, okay? So he started his, and here's something else you got to try to avoid if all, at all possible. Whenever you're hit, whenever you're approached by a panhandler or anybody, Talk as little as you can. Don't make conversation because that's what the con's looking for, to get you talking, okay? And once they get you talking, they'll lead you anywhere they want you to go, okay? So just skip the talk, cut to the chase. You can say something like, what do you want? You know, and they, but they'll tell you. They're right, well, I just want directions, which is total lie, all right? And uh, anyway, I said, man, I, I'm, I'm not from around here. And I started to push my back. He was, he was about... 15, 20 feet away, so I felt pretty comfortable with that. He hadn't got into my, quote, space yet. But I knew he was fixing to. So anyway, I got up to the car, and I put the basket between me and the individual. And, of course, then he goes into his real con. He said, look, man, I, I just I just need some money. And I said, man, I ain't got any. And then shut up. Zip it. No is a good answer. No, and then shut up. Okay? And if they're going to make a move, they're going to do it then. Well, he thought about it, but he didn't, and he walked off. I, I thought he was going to go off a few steps and turn around and come back, but he didn't. He, for the second time, he left. But, so just be aware, and whenever you go in, whenever you're traveling, you're going to have to go get gasoline every now and then. You know, 
whenever you, if you can pay at the pump without going inside at all, that's great. Okay, that's fine. That's, that's a good move there. But if you pay at the pump, you got to go in and use a restroom. Be aware that no matter where you are, wherever you're traveling, you know, your plates might as well be a blinking red light. I'm from out of state. I don't know where the hell I am. I'm a stranger. You know, it's just blinking all those signals to every bum in the area. And, and that's how they live. And if you live that way, you get damn good at it too. So anyway, so whenever you go into the, you know, what, do your business in this quick shop or quick stop, whatever it is, gas station, and you come out, whenever, whenever you get in your car, of course, hit the lock immediately and then look around, see if anybody happened to be following you. You know, you, maybe somebody just walked out the door and they're standing by the entrance, or maybe somebody's walking out and they're standing by their car. That doesn't mean shit. You don't want to be too paranoid, okay? Because if you're too paranoid, you will completely not enjoy your trip. But you want to be a little paranoid because that'll keep you alive, okay? A lot paranoid, they put you away. A little paranoid, you live for another day, okay? So, having said all that, what else? Uh, whenever you get to your campsite, or let's just say you, you left the, the gas station, you're traveling down the highway, and one of the cars you saw at the uh, 7-Eleven or whatever it happened to be, it's far, you see it back there in your mirror, you see it, okay? Well, that could be, you know, that coincidence, okay? You know, if you go up and get on the interstate and this car's back there, that hey, that that's going to happen. It's going to happen. Don't get paranoid about that. Uh, but if, if that car is back there for 200 miles on an interstate and then you take an exit and they take the same exit, red flags just went up, okay? And if you take a right and a left or whatever and they're, they're, they're still there, then you go through this step right here, and this will, then this will tell you the truth. You take a, you can either do right or left, it doesn't matter. You just do three in a row, okay? You take a left, left, left. On the first left, if that car turns, 50-50 chance that they're following you. The second left, it just moved up to 90, okay? 90. The third left, bing, 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 bing. They're following you, guarantee you. That ain't a coincidence, okay? Be that as it may, you know, a little paranoid keep you alive, and that's it. So, what else can you do? All right, here's a move right here you can do. I learned this when I was in the U.S. Peace Corps. I wish they'd have told me this when I was in the Army in 1967, but they didn't. They, they didn't want you to live, I don't think. But anyway, <clears throat> in the Peace Corps, we had to go through some self-defense training, and, and those moves work. Now, there's several I could go through, but I'm going to go through one that works 100 times out of 100. I've used it three, three times, and it works every single time. But you've got to get yourself in position to use it, and it's this. Okay, right here, right here, right above these two little bones in your neck, this area of your neck is very, very vulnerable, okay? Okay. All right, right up in there, right where the voice box is, okay, right in there. All right, so what you do, if you can, let's just say this individual gets really close or they start getting close and, you know, you put your hand up or what, don't do that. You know, let that son of a bitch come on in, okay? And what you want to do is, is you, you put your hand up, you know, like, hey, man, you know, back off or something. You know, get his attention with your hand. Get the man looking at that hand, okay? or whoever it is, get, you know, move your hand because we're, our eyes are drawn to movement, okay? Go, do your hand, let, hey man, hey, 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 hey. You know, and when, when, and when, if they get close enough, if they get within arm's length, now you don't want to miss. You don't, well, if they're gonna hurt you, they're gonna do it anyway, but this will stop that crap. Get that hand, you know, get that hand moving. <clears throat> you know, get that, get those eyes, you know, you know, put your hand here, hey man, hey, 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 yeah, like that. And once you get this hand here for about the second or third time, or maybe even the first time if they're close enough, you got these two fingers right here, okay? And you do just like this. You go boom, 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 and then whop right here as, as hard as you can push. Now, they say if you do it too hard, you can kill them. Do I give a shit? Huh? I Damn. I mean, if this guy's going to do me bodily harm, I'm sorry I killed you, man. Damn, I'm hurt. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You know, if you got a conscience, you better stay at home. Because these bums out there on the road and these cons and these other sons of bitches don't have a conscience. But it, it, how many times has that happened my whole life? I'm 71 years old. Three times, okay? Three times. That's it. But again, you know, you just put your hand up here and be ready with the other hand. The guy comes up. And, hey, man, you know, just kind of start this. 
you know, start, hey, you know, back, you back off or get away or some shit. And then if you have to, you know, you can take your hand up, but don't push them because you want them closer. You want them where you can get them, baby. Get that bass. Just like a snake bite right here, right here. And it's easy to get it, too. Easy to get it. You know, you won't miss. Believe me. You may be scared to death, but you won't miss. But anyway, that's another tip, and that's the final tip that I can think of. Uh, you know, and th those are safety tips. Now, as far as the rest of the solo traveling, uh, you know, you know, you can meet a lot of people solo traveling. You know, you go into national parks. I've been to a lot of them. I've been to state parks. You you're going to meet a lot of good people. Or can you meet a crazy idiot? Sure, you can meet those anywhere, 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 anywhere. Have I ever met any in a national park? No. At state park? No. Uh, camping out, boondocking? No. Uh, the places I've met them are in the in towns, out in the parking lots of stores and stuff, you know, restaurants and crap. That, that's where the trouble is, at least it has been for me. Have I ever been followed? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. Not for any distance anyway. Because, you know, if you're a traveler like I am, and I pull in to get gas in Fort Stockton, Texas, uh, my next stop might not be for four hours. And, and somebody got to be pretty serious about following you, aren't they? But anyway, as far as uh, traveling in a van, there is a site, and I always get it wrong. I'll mention it now. I think it's Enigmatic Fanatics. Enigmatic, E-N something. It, you can find it out. Enigmatic Fanatics or Enigmatic Nomadics. It's one of those two. It's a YouTube channel, and there's a lady that solo camps in a Ford Transit, okay? And she's got it fixed up, and you can find her and her setup on the Enigmatic Fanatic channel, okay? And uh, you, you just watch the video with her in it. You can see how she set up her Ford Transit. Uh, it's really neat, and she's a solo female traveler, and I promise you, once you get her name and info, you can probably contact her uh, either through YouTube or email and start a conversation because she would be a lady that you could uh, follow around, okay? But anyway, having said all that, bye-bye. Thumbs up, carpe diem, adios, bye-bye. You guys have a great day.